For years, if your intimate photos appeared online without your consent, something often called revenge porn, there wasn't much you could do about it. But that is changing. More than a dozen states now have laws against it. This week, the Washington State House of Representatives voted to let victims seek civil penalties. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman is here with more. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning. Saturday morning, talking about porn. All right, so let's get into this. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anita, you're going to knock me right off my seat with this one. I, I'll tell you one thing. The initial reaction, actually, to looking at this subject really becomes somewhat humorous until you look into it. Because I talked to enough people, particularly in law enforcement, not my husband, um, who would say, oh, come on. Come on. I mean, you know, there was a picture of her. Of course, it was going to get public at some point. And this blame the victim thing sent me to the moon. It was like what we used to do with sexual assault. So let me tell you what it really is. All right. How do we define this? All right. Because I think that's yeah. really what's important. It's an image or a video that is intimate, that has been posted, this is the key, with malicious intent mm -hmm. without the victim's consent. So what you really have here is one of two things. Either someone in a private moment with their significant other either gave them a picture or they took a picture or a video together, or what really, really can get to me is someone hacks into someone's cell phone or computer right. and gets a picture. There is no national revenge porn law, though, right? And that only is about, correct. And, Not only yet. About, and about 15 states have made it a crime. So how do you prosecute these cases? Well, I think the prosecutors around the country are getting much more active. The government is at work here. And what the government has done is say, Let, what pigeonhole can we put this in? Cyberbullying, cyber harassment, uh, cyber stalking. And then you can get to really intricate uh, prosecutions of when you have hacking, of course, and when you might have even extortion. What caught my eye about this, though, is the two biggest culprits. One was in trouble because they basically said, you stole the images. And the other was in trouble because they said, you stole the images and then said, pay me to take them down. Oh, yes, he's my favorite guy. Well, that has nothing to do with the images themselves, though, in terms of what they're in trouble for. That's exactly right. One of the things we have to look at is you can have images of nude people. People. It can be as benign as, for example, a woman who is breastfeeding. You can have images of people who are naked who, when they're in books or when they're in legitimate form. And so laws like a national revenge porn law would be too overbroad. They would wind up offending the First Amendment. So how do we get these guys, and it's not only the guys who want to get revenge porn, the ones who really get to me are the ones you're talking about, the ones who host the sites. Yeah. So if you host the site, how greedy are these guys? It's not like they just put up a site and some guy posts his girlfriend's photos, but what they then do is they put up a different set, and a site, and when they put up that different site, they ask these women to pay them to take it down, to restore their reputations. No wonder they're gonna go to prison now. It's, it's really significant. So that's how they're going after it. And finally, civil law. Yeah. Civil law, sue for emotional distress, extraordinary law firm out of Pennsylvania, out of Pittsburgh, k &L Gates, doing pro bono work, 50 lawyers, to say we have a new way, we can do right. it by copyright protection. It's right. fascinating to see them say it's First Amendment. That's the reason. Ricky, Ricky Kleeman, thank you so much.